Businesses generate a ton of data. A lot of that at worst remains unused or at best ends up in monthly reports and dashboards. Very little is analyzed rigorously to critically evaluate the effectiveness of past decisions or inform future decisions, both of which largely rely on gut feel of managers. And this is where a lot of businesses are weak. They end up changing the way they do business on a very regular basis. And the way they measure the impact of any change is through a single difference. Before I made the decision versus after I made the decision. And what we are saying is that single difference needs to be compared with a counterfactual. Meaning, if you had not made that decision, what would have happened? In this episode, we look at how data and research were used to evaluate the impact of telemedicine centers on patients' care-seeking behavior. Telemedicine is not just about convenience. It also expands healthcare access in rural communities. It is a network of primary care centers with access to telecom technology and staffed by low to mid-level health workers. They in turn conduct preliminary screening and then teleconsult with a remote physician who may refer the patient to a secondary or tertiary care facility. When we open this new channel of delivering a service, what impact does it have on the behavior of patients pertaining to the existing channel of healthcare delivery? And here there are two possible effects. One is because you have a new channel now, you are going to expand the market and get new customers, new patients into your business. Let's call that as market augmentation effect. The second effect is some patients who were coming to your clinics and hospitals now find telemedicine to be more convenient and as a result they switch from physical to the virtual channel. Let's call this as the cannibalization effect. And so the main point to make about telemedicine is that the relative magnitude of these two effects is important to estimate to ascertain whether this new channel is going to be profitable and yield attractive returns to a business. Our research setting is the Aravind Eye Care System the largest eye care provider in the world. Arvind was a great empirical setting because it is a vertical eye care system. It has primary care in terms of these telemedicine centers, secondary care, tertiary care in terms of hospital. Each patient has a unique patient ID. Irrespective of which part of the health system they access, the patient record is kept based on the unique patient ID. To understand the research, let's look at an analogy. We take two sets of patients. One who are given the real drug, the treatment arm. Another who are given a placebo, a sugar pill that doesn't have any therapeutic value, the control arm. And the drug's efficacy is measured by comparing the health of these two sets of patients before and after the drug. It is the equivalent of a drug. It is the telemedicine center itself. And who are the patients? The patients are the population centers or villages near which the telemedicine center opened. Now, unlike the drug trial, I am not going to be able to run an experiment with Arvind Eye Care System saying, why don't we open telemedicine centers at random locations? That's not pragmatic. So we have to take the idea of this difference in differences, but modify it slightly. It's called a quasi-experimental approach as against an actual experiment. The way we are going to do this is locations where telemedicine centers open, that is fixed. That's our treatment arm. But to construct a control arm, we are going to look for population centers or villages or hamlets and habitations which are very similar to villages and hamlets and habitations that got a telemedicine center near them in all kinds of respect. But these villages did not get a telemedicine center near them. And that's why they become a control arm. And then we are going to observe patient behavior from both of these arms over a long period of time and see if the patient access uh, behavior is different in the treatment arm. The research team constructed a rich data set of over 4.8 million visits from 2.3 million unique patients over a decade. 
end, after conducting several rigorous statistical analysis, they arrived at some interesting insights. At an overall network level, there was a dramatic increase in access to healthcare from the villages that got the telemedicine centers compared to villages that did not get a telemedicine center. In fact, this increase in access was to the tune of 30%. Our analysis also showed that there was some cannibalization, which resulted in a reduction in patient flow to the hospitals, which was to the tune of about 6%. So it's commonly said that if you open a primary care center, which the telemedicine center really was, it should one lead to new patients coming, but of those new patients, we may be able to generate some referrals up to the hospital. And this was an effect that we actually did not find in our study. It was believed within Arvind that each telemedicine center generates about 10 to 20 cataract patients who are then operated upon in the hospital. Whereas our results were showing that there was no increase in the cataract surgeries because of telemedicine centers and this was a conundrum for them. The way to interpret these results is to say these increases in cataract surgeries would have happened also in villages that did not get a telemedicine center. Which would not have been possible to visualize using only operational data because you never opened telemedicine centers there. But now, because we were able to do this research and put together a data set, that counterfactual was created. The cannibalization effect and the market augmentation effect is a relevant pair of effects that will be important for all businesses, not just for Arvind and not just in eye care. The other extrapolation is really in terms of the research methodology, what we were calling as quasi-experimental difference in differences approach. And we found that this is a very useful method to do impact evaluation, where experimentation is very hard. For instance, we might have noticed that prices of rides vary between two users sometimes. These tech platforms are very amenable to conducting experiments and prices may be chosen by the platform to ascertain how elastic demand is to price shocks. Now, those experiments are very difficult to run in physical environments. And hence, methodologies like quasi-experimental approaches are quite relevant where experimentation is prohibitively expensive.